Hello everyone, welcome to Relationship Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker and I am your host and today we're going to be talking about some glow in the dark fun. I hope everyone is having a wonderful summer, productive summer. I hope everybody is vacationing, unwinding, going back outside. Um, I've been posting up several different events and different things going on here in the city. Um, and I, I do that because what I have found is when I get to ask some people, what's your hobby? I found is because I deal with women primarily. I have found that a lot of women either don't have a hobby or don't necessarily, um, if they do have a hobby, a lot of times they don't get to, um, participate as often as they would like to. I'm going to say it like that. But if you are a single woman, let me say this, because of course I, I advocate for married women to have a hobby because you need to have something that you do on your own. For me, I love to travel, which means that sometimes I can't do it as often as I would like, but I love to travel. I love history and I love, you know, I've gotten back into my ancestry account that I've had since 2010. So now I'm back working on my ancestry account. So those are my hobbies. I enjoy reading. In other words, I'm self-aware. I know what my hobbies are. A lot of ladies said, well, how do you have hobbies when you have children? Well, there are different things that you can do that you can actually include your children in. When I'm working on my ancestry, guess what? I include my children in it. I, when I went to talk to my grandfather the other day, my children were there and they actually heard him say that, no, our family was not slaves on the plantation, that we actually owned the plantation. And we had people working on the plantation. I said, well, did our family have slaves working on the plantation? Because y'all know black people own slaves too. A lot of free black people own slaves. And he said, well, no, I don't necessarily think that they were slaves. I think that they just, you know, worked on the plantation and it was more of business for them. And he just basically ran down the family operation and how we own the general store and all of this type of stuff, which made, you know, myself and my children understand that entrepreneurship has always been in our family. But that's neither here nor there. I don't want to get off the topic of what the video is about, but I'm just trying to get you to understand how important it is for you to understand what your hobby is. Suppose it's bowling, suppose it's skating, suppose it's going to different festivals. I know couples they literally go to every festival. When the spring start, they going from one festival to the next festival. And if you're in the New Orleans area, you know they have some type of festival almost every weekend. So if that's your thing, then that is your thing. But I just need you to understand what your thing is. Meaning that you have to be self-aware of what it is that you enjoy doing. Hobbies does not necessarily mean that you got to go tear the club down every weekend. Because some people say, well, it ain't nothing to do. But And I don't do the clubs. And it's like, there's so many things to do outside of a club environment. But you have to be self-aware to know what it is that you enjoy doing. All right. Um, which brought me to, I need to put some type of mixer, speed dating, singles event together. Because I had so many women inboxing. And then I had so many men inboxing. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe I need to put these people together and just let nature do its thing. You know? So, um, that's that on that. <sighs> Glow in the dark fun. Y'all, we got so much different stuff that have come in. We, we have stuff come in every week. Every week. And I really try to keep these lives. I, I, I want to give relationship and life um, advice and all of this kind of stuff. But at the same time, I want to be able to put the products out there too. What I'm learning, I, I actually enjoy dealing with the people that pay me to deal with them. I'm going to be honest with you. I enjoy dealing with the people that pay me. <clears throat> because when people paying you for your knowledge... They coming in open-minded. They coming in eager, ready to learn, and ready to receive what you have to offer. The Bible says something about casting your pearls to the swines. A lot of times, I I, I don't want to say I get offended because it's not offended, but it's almost like an aggravation because you saw your mama be independent. 
you saw your mama do everything on her own and you saw her struggle. A lot of us saw our mother's struggle. And my thing is, why would you want to repeat that same cycle? A lot of you all have independent mindsets and I'm trying to teach you to have an interdependent mindset, meaning understanding that you have to work with the person that you're with. You have to work with your partner. And a lot of people, they stuck on this independent. I got to do me. I got to have my own. I'm making decisions for me, my happiness, my, 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 my. Whereas interdependent, we start saying our, 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 our happiness, our family, our success. And that's the difference. And a lot of people can't receive that because they never seen it. And a, lot of, and a lot of times when you try to teach people the methods to get there, they reject it. Like right now I'm doing this video and I'm watching the numbers drop. Right now while I'm doing this video, I'm watching the numbers drop. Because, oh she on that bullshit. I don't want to hit it. But you're going to be in the same circumstance year in, year out. Your situation is not going to change. Because you want to maintain and hold on to this independent mentality. So, if you want what I got, come to white school. All right. We have this new Firefly G-Spot glass wand. Everything I'm talking about is glow in the dark. This is a G-Spot wand. It is glass, meaning that you can do temperature play with it. You can put it in boiling water and just let it sit. And then it's going to have a warming sensation. Or you can put it in the freezer. It'll be cool which is going to give you a cooling sensation. Either way, both will stimulate the G-spot and make her squirt. Okay? We have something else called frisky fingers. Now, y'all know we've been had the regular frisky finger. That's the vibrator to go on your finger. You can stimulate the clitoris with it. You can stimulate the nipples with it. You could be riding that dick. You can reach back and stimulate the nuts with it. But it is glow in the dark as well. And I like different stuff. In other words, you got to understand... You got to keep the fun in your bedroom. You can't keep coming in and doing the same thing over and over and over again. See, I'm the type of person, I'm going to have this glow-in-the-dark tongue dinger in my mouth, which is going to turn my mouth into a vibrator. That means when I'm sucking a dick, he's going to feel the vibration and the humming of the toy in my mouth. Then you got the glow-in-the-dark cock ring, which you slide down to the base of the dick. And you got one that's going to stimulate his nuts and the other one is going to stimulate your clitoris. So that means both of y'all getting a stimulation. And then you got the frisky finger. So imagine if you got this in your mouth, he got this wrapped around his dick. This is on your finger. All of the lights are out. This is visually something different for you. Something that you have not done before. Something that you have not experienced. So that in itself makes it exciting, okay? Then we have the glow in the dark dildo, seven inches, vibrating, multi-speed, very inexpensive. I want to say they like $29.99 on the website, very inexpensive. And then if you really want to take it up a notch, I do have the green body stocking, which is crotchless. Um, I'll post a picture. Uh, somewhere in this video for my YouTube people so you can actually see the stocking because I'm wearing it. Um, and then I have another uh, lime green lingerie that I'll post a picture of. And I'm actually wearing it in red in the picture. But that way you can get a visual. Both of these are going to be on the website. Both of these are going to be on the website. Okay. So there is a question in my latest group. And the question is, should pregnant women work? Okay. I didn't put wives or single women. I just specifically put pregnant women. Okay. I was asked how I felt about it. The young man sent me the message. I was asked how I felt about it. And let me just say this. When a woman becomes pregnant, I don't think people understand what pregnancy is does to the body the way your body have to transition um basically like your body goes into a whole nother mode and most of us are women and most of us have experienced pregnancy and the position that i take and this is the position that i take 
In other cultures, pregnant women are allowed to put their feet up and their support system cares for them and nurtures them and helps them to get a healthy baby into this world. Meaning that they don't have to go to a person's job, whether it's a sitting down job, and they don't have to go there and stress mentally. And they don't have to go to a job and they don't have to stress physically. Their only job is to get a healthy baby here. It is important that you are having children with people who can afford to have children. That's the first thing first. Because what happens if you have a doctor that tells you you have to go on pelvic rest? What happens if you have a doctor that tells you you have to go on bed rest? And it's two different things because pelvic rest basically means that no sex, no nothing. Bed rest basically means put your feet up and, you know, do minimal movement and all of this type of stuff. These things happen during pregnancy, especially people who have high-risk pregnancies. What happens if your doctor tells you you can't do all of these moving around? How are you going to help and contribute then? What would he do then? I need for when, when I, this is what I need our people to do. When you decide that you're going to keep a baby, make sure that you can afford to. Y'all know I'm pro-choice like a motherfucker. And y'all know this about me. Meaning that if you're bringing children in the world, these things need to be discussed. <clears throat> the discussion should go something like, you know, if, if we were to get pregnant, I do not want to have to go to work. I want to be able to stay home and take care of myself and bring forth a healthy baby into this world. Or if I was to work, I want to have a passive income to where I'm working at my leisure and not actually going into a work environment. But what is happening is we getting pregnant, we just having babies, and then, you know, a lot of us are working through the pregnancy. A lot of us are stressing through the pregnancy. A lot of us are having to contribute. Our income matters and all of this kind of stuff. And I just think that when we decide that we want to have children, we need to be having children for people who could be responsible for us. Just in case you don't want to work or just in case your doctor tell you you can't work. Another portion of that um, situation that was sent to me that's in the group and the synopsis is the man basically took his whole savings when he got an apartment and the young lady decided she didn't want to leave her family to go and live with him because he was sounds like he was pushing the issue about her either working or getting unemployment and all of this. And my thing is leave her where she at with her family, leave her with the people who can take care of her. Leave her with her support system, with the people who are going to nurture her and not force her to go out into the workforce. Leave her with people who can who can afford to maintain her. And they had people say, but he took his whole savings and went and got them somewhere to stay. That's like me saying, I took my whole savings and went and got a car and then I couldn't afford the car note. You shouldn't take your whole savings and go and get something that you can't afford to maintain, that you're going to need help maintaining in other words, young men, if you cannot afford a family, protect your seed, meaning use protection. Don't get people pregnant if you cannot afford to have a family. But that's not the conversation that we having with our sons. A lot of us are having conversations and the conversations are something like go be young. We go get rooms during prom. You know, we make our homes available for them to lay up and have sex. <clears throat> Excuse me. But we're not teaching our sons how if this young lady gets pregnant, you are 100% responsible until this child is five years old. Because if she gets child support, the judge is going to say that he's 100% respon responsible until the child is five years old. We have to have different conversations with our sons so that they can understand the importance of protecting their seed. All right. But anyway... Uh, register for wife school if you are trying to understand what it means to shed this independent mindset. See, what I posted this morning is that we have learned, meaning that we learned from our families, we learned from our mothers, we've learned from all the women that came before us. Then, when you come to wife school, it's my job to make you unlearn all of that that they have taught you. 
And then you have to reprocess all of the new information and learn how to apply it to your everyday life. So people say, what's going on in wife school? Register for wife school. Come to wife school. Learn how to be able to free yourself up. Learn how to be able to be there available for your family without wearing yourself down. I see a lot of women that just be wore out. You can't perform in the bedroom. I see women that come into this store who literally trying to perform in the bedroom and trying to be everything they need to be for these men, but you can't because you wore out. You've overextended yourself. You are exhausted. So that means that you have to come to me to talk about what you learned, for me to unlearn you, and then reprocess. That's what wife school is. You got to unlearn all that independent thinking and learn interdependent thinking and then learn how to apply it to your everyday life. Okay? We still have openings. Our first class starts July the 11th. Um, I'm excited uh, because I actually, when I was seeing the ladies paying, it's a few of y'all that I know. Um, and I'm excited to get those personalities into the class. Because these some strong-willed women. And I'm trying to, you know, I'm like, shit, you got these strong-willed women coming up in wife school to try to unlearn all of that and learn? This is about to be an interesting class. <laughs> so, uh, lastly, let me give a shout-out to the Beehive for my uh, set that I ordered from them. And, yes, I actually ordered it. One thing that happened during COVID is me and this online shopping. But... I believe in supporting uh, a lot of our local small businesses. And this is an elephant set, just in case you can't see it. I love big, bulky, pretty jewelry. I love it. Oh, matter of fact, I meant to change this back over to this hand. But anyway, <laughs> I love big, bulky jewelry. I love it. So that's my thing. And play. Uh, I used to get a lot of my stuff from uh, Monique Milton when she was doing the um, paparazzi. And I used to love those big, and the sets used to be like $25, $30, some of them $40. Those big, beautiful sets. I used to love to get those big, beautiful sets from Paparazzi. So when I saw Ashley post this elephant set up, I was like, hey, that's me. Let me get that. <laughs> Let me get that. All right. So if you saw anything that you like here, it's on the website. I've already added it to the website. You can come to the store. We are open from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. I try to be mindful about the type of content because I know people follow my page for sex talk. I know they follow the page for toy reviews and all of this kind of stuff. So I don't want to get away from my original purpose for the page. But even as I transition in life, I expect that my platform will probably be transitioning with me, you know. Um... Because I honestly, you know, when God gives you your purpose and he lets you know what it is that he needs you to be doing, you know, even when you're trying to hold on to some of these, this old stuff, you know, you have to, you have to be obedient and actually transition. And the transition is wife school, marriages will be restored. And I see the couples doing the work and I see them actually posting and sharing you know, how good they feel at this point in their life and how this has been some of the happiest moments in their marriage, how they would not want to go back to what it was because they really enjoying what's going on in their marriage right now. And I have so many wives in training because if you are in um, my wife group, I have a lot of women who are engaged. Those are my wives in training. If you are my wives in training, you know, it's a lot that you're taking in as well. And you, you're really getting excited about this journey for yourself and your family. Because this is not about mine. This is all about our. Okay? So, register for wife school. Um, and I don't know what else to say after that. Other than you all be blessed and enjoy the rest of your day.